Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Pacific Inlet. We are going to finish up our very final episode here on this map. And all of those cryptic messages that I've been giving for the last, well, yeah, for the last two episodes, uh, you will all know by now, You'll, well, most of you will know by now, that it was because I had FS19 <laughs> coming to the channel and I'm now able to play it. So if you want to see gameplay for FS19, then go and check out those videos. I'll be doing two videos per day for a little while. Uh, I don't know how long, a couple of weeks maybe. Uh, certainly up until release. Beyond that, I'm not really sure. I haven't decided. I've not made up my mind yet. Uh, but uh, there will be gameplay. There's, there's, there's gameplay for FS19. I'm still doing the FS17, and this will be scheduled all the way through. Obviously, you've seen yesterday and the day before, after I posted up the FS19 stuff. Uh, I'm still recording this one now, and there'll be another one on Monday to finish up the Tyrolean Alps. For those of you who do not want to go and watch any content beforehand. Now... I went and found out why this one wasn't working. We couldn't get this one to work, if you remember. The reason this one wasn't working is not because of that. I don't want that. I want to do that, like that. There we go. Now press H. The reason this one wasn't working was because I had, as I suspected, the, um, the Chop Straw mod. If you've got the Chop Straw mod active when it's not built into the map, it can very often cause you not to be able to plant at all. At least I'm assuming it was the Chop Straw mod. It may have been a Chop Straw mod add-on, the, the, the direct seeding add-on bit. Um, that may have been um, causing the particular conflict because I actually I disabled both of them. And I disabled a couple, uh, the, ta the animals table manners one as well. I also disabled that one. Uh, so I disabled a couple of mods uh, all in one go, and they all seem to have worked. But I did have this before with um, Chop Straw, so I'm assuming that that one is the culprit. However, we all know that you should never make assumptions. You should never assume it makes an ass out of you and me. Apologies for those of you who find that um, not to be particularly polite. But that is one of my favourite sayings. It's something I say to my kids all the time. Never assume it makes an ass out of you and me. Um, for those of you who are unaware, when I say that, I don't actually mean anything rude. An ass is another name for a donkey. So, um, that's, that's where it originally came from. The, the other, um, meaning for the word ass, that came later. But, uh, donkey was the first one. So, just, 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 just to clarify that, just to clear that up, I'm not being rude. I'm just basically saying that if you make assumptions... It makes a bit of a donkey out of you. Now, we spin this one around here. I'm hoping... I'll, I'll do two more because I don't want to risk this one driving into the lake. And then we should, once we've done this, we should be able to fast forward time. We should be able to use our ridiculously expensive combine. I still can't believe that we went and spent all that money on that combine. I didn't realise that the header was so much. I genuinely thought I should have bought the header first. If I'd bought the header first... This wouldn't have happened. And this won't happen in FS19, by the way. Okay, this, this is something that doesn't happen in FS19. I've already seen it. I'm not going to tell you why, but it's basically that there is now a mechanic in place to ensure that you don't make horrible, reckless mistakes like we've just done. And it's, um, it's altogether improved. I will say no more for those of you who are deliberately holding back and not watching any FS19 content. And I'm going to try my hardest not to talk about it. However, I am just a teensy little bit excited about the whole FS19 thing. Uh, so if I let slip some details, please don't be angry with me. Please, please don't be angry with me because... Um, it's so cool I get to play FS19. It's amazing. And I realize I actually just, I'm, I'm sort of listening to myself right now and thinking I'm rubbing your noses in it because none of you get to play it yet, which is actually really, really mean and selfish of me. And I'm really sorry. Okay, I am genuinely sorry. Um, I'm not trying to rub your faces in it or anything like that or gloat or any any of the above um 
I'm just absolutely over. <laughs> I, I got, I got sent it last night. Uh, it's, it's uh, Thursday for me, and oh, okay, we're, we're leaving that down in the ground. It's Thursday for me. I got sent it last night, so I was recording and editing and getting it uploaded onto YouTube until about half past one this morning. Uh, so that it was there for the nine o'clock um, embargo lifting time that they gave us and at nine o'clock exactly my video went up and I was very very pleased and I spent a lot of time working on that video and I think perhaps the beginning of it was um, maybe I overdid it a little bit maybe I should have sped that up just a tiny little bit however Overall, I don't regret it. It's something quite different to what I've done previously, just, just the opening sequence. And overall, I have no regrets. Maybe, yes, there's definitely things I could do to tweak it to improve the, the, the type of thing that I did for, you know, may, maybe sometime in the future. But overall, I'm, I'm still pleased with the effect that I got. So anybody that has seen it, Give me your honest opinion. Give give me your... I mean, I realise this was a couple days ago now for you, because this is Saturday now, and this one went live on Thursday morning that I'm talking about. But if you did see that very first one, or if you haven't, and you do wish to, please go and have a look at it. And I'd like to know your honest opinion of my opening sequence. Uh, did you like it? Did you feel it was overdone? Do you feel it was unnecessary? Do you think that uh, it took too long? Um, it was too long-winded, uh, not suited to it. I want to hear your views and opinions. And as always, I want your honest opinions. I want your criticisms. And I'm not just looking for praise. I, I, never, I never ask for your opinions if I'm looking for just praise. If I want just praise, I can look in a mirror and say, Frith, you're wonderful. I've never actually done that, by the way. Um, I just want to clarify. I have never, ever, 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 ever done that. And can't honestly see me doing it i know some people do and it's kind of like a motivational type thing but i can't i i i can't i i couldn't bring myself to do it um i don't know i don't know what it is about it but anyway um that bit aside if if that works for you then by all means go and do it please that it's if whatever works i'm always a strong believer in whatever works for you personally um no, I'm asking for your honest opinions, so I would like your honest opinions. I want honest feedback. Like it or dislike it, whichever, give me your honest feedback. Do you think that it was absolutely unnecessary whatsoever? Did it just make you laugh because it was ridiculous? Uh, did you actually like it? And, you know, so on and so forth. It, it, criticism is always, always good, I think. I like to get criticism on anything I do because there's always room for improvement. You can never produce something that is 100% perfect. It's not possible. Well, I don't think it's possible anyway. Um, you just... I, I've never believed you can get something 100% perfect. There's always something you can do to improve. So this is what I like with criticism, is it points out the bits that you may have missed yourself that you can then improve the next time round and that's kind of the things that I tend to go for. So I'm, I am a very harsh critic of myself. Whenever I do something, make something, create something, whatever it might be, and then I go and look at it later on, the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking over the, what I've done for what I did wrong, what mistakes I made, what areas there could be for improvement for working on for next time. And that's what I love about genuine criticism. Not just, you're an idiot, that's just trolling there's there's no actual valid point being made whatsoever other than someone is trying to vent for whatever reason it might be i mean okay admittedly sometimes you're an idiot if put in context could actually be a valid point like some of the games i play i get the mistake so bad so wrong that people will say you're an idiot and but then give a reason for me being an idiot that I can live with. You know, that, that's fine. That's, that's valid criticism. You're an idiot because you didn't see that right there. And this is painfully obvious. It should be obvious to a three-year-old. Why can't you figure it out? You must be an idiot. You must be some kind of moron. Um, yes, quite likely. Yes, okay, quite likely. But 
I am an idiot that can learn. So, you know, I, I do learn from these things. And the next time round, I don't miss it completely. I only take, like, 17 episodes to pick up on it. And I feel that's improvement. I feel that is definite improvement. <laughs> but, so, yeah, this is what I want. Anybody that's seen that video, go and have a look at the opening sequence. I, that's, I'm, I'm really, like, super excited because, for me, this has gone up, like, a couple of hours ago. Not even that, actually. And... So people are just now beginning to have a look at it and I now I'm actually like completely able to talk about the fact that I'm playing FS19 and I'm absolutely loving it and I have got a very busy schedule. You've probably already seen the busy schedule already. I'm doing my normal regular uploading plus an additional two episodes a day of FS19 stuff which is going to continue until FS19 is released. If you want the game on pre-order, you want it nice and cheap. Well, I say nice and cheap. 15% um, off. There's a link in the description down below. Uh, there will be for the last two episodes as well. Um, it's 15% off until the game is released on Monday night, early Tuesday morning, depending where you are in the world. If you're here in the UK, it's 11 p.m. on Monday night. Fanatical have got 15% off the um, pre-release order of FS19 uh, up until it's out it's pre-release order so if you if you pre-release order uh, you get it and as far as i know you get the pre-release um the the, the pre-order bonus if you want the, the you know that the mahindra retriever thingy majiggy what's it call it um you get that pre-order bonus with the game um if you order through fanatical because you're getting a pre-order um a pre-order uh yeah a pre-order it pre-order yeah pre-order um bonus you get a steam key anyway it's you're buying a steam key and you you get if you order the, the steam version you get the thing um you, you get that retriever thing as well as if you order it direct from giants as well so and any pre-order so i'm assuming that the, those steam keys also come with it however i have they have got that written on the fanatical website but they don't specifically state that you get that bonus however you do get four pound fifty off it's 25 pound fifty instead of the usual 30 pounds so you know you, you weigh them up there is maybe the small chance you won't get that pre-order utility vehicle just for driving around in uh but you do save yourself a fiver so you know pros and cons the whichever one you want um most people are fairly certain that you do actually get the pre-order bonus with it so I don't want to say either way because I'm not 100% certain, so I'm, I'm not going to commit on it. Now, we've used up almost 500 litres of seed. We're going to need more than 500 litres of seed, so we were right to buy another pallet of the stuff. Um, yes, I think we that's how much we had, wasn't it? It was something like that. I am very pleased to see this working, so we should be able to actually have some combining done as well which will be absolutely fantastic. I'm very, very pleased about that. We've just got to let it finish planting now, and then we'll be able to do a bit of combining before we finish up this series. And if, you know, I talked about this before, I would like to do another series like this in FS19. And looking at it, hard mode is, I mean, yeah, you, you, the, the base maps, you've already got fields and stuff laid out. So it's not quite like we've done here. But even hard mode is, it, it's looking like it's going to be more of a challenge than we've previously been used to, which I quite like. I think that is a nice little touch. Um, I'm talking about FS19 again. I'll stop. I won't. We're not talking about FS19. This is FS17. Concentrate, Frith. There are people who don't want you to spoil it for them, so don't do it. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy, okay? I'm not going to be that guy. We are, nobody likes that guy. Nobody. There is nobody in the room that likes that guy. So don't be him. Just don't. Right. I should have had a mirror then. I could have given myself a motivational speech. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a little bit excited today. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll let that carry on there for a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to get that header hitched on as well Let's back out of here there we go we've used this combine before we use this combine in 
um, FS uh, in Estancia Lapacho is where we used this combine before. And it did work really well. I was actually quite pleased with this combine. I don't think we used this header very much on it, though. Mostly we were using it with the corn header. Um, but it worked well, whichever one we used. It was, it was quite good. Uh, we'll get that one onto there. So this combine cost us 30 grand, which we thought was a spectacular deal. We really did. But then they, they, they went and got us. They got us with the small print, right? They went and got us by completely messing us around with the, the price of the header. The price the header cost more than the combine itself, which I feel was a little bit cheeky, to be honest. I really do. I, I do feel there was a little bit of cheek going on with that one. Uh, but there's not a lot that we can do about it. So we got that combine. Is there right? Actually, I'm going to lower that down. I want to go to the front. There we go. Lower that down. Like that. Switch you off again. There. Make no comparisons between this and FS19. I was about to make a comparison between this and FS19. And then I stopped myself. I did. I actually stopped myself. I'm not planning to release this save on um, Mod Hoster, by the way. Uh, we haven't really done a great deal. I know that we've done a bit. We've sort of made a field here, but I wasn't actually planning to release the save because um, I'm... I'll tell you what. I'll hold the save and I'll sell any mods that I've got here. Obviously, that wrapper there, that one's out anyway. That one's not being released. Um, but any mods, I'll get rid of them, which is basically <laughs> basically everything. Um, the combine's got to go. The trailer, the JCB, I think, yeah, uh, all of it. That's all got to go. Those have all got to go. That's got to go. You got to go. The two mowers can stay. That one's out. That one's out. Uh, that one's out. That one can stay. Those two are gone. Those are gone because we'll be returning that one. Um, see, and that way I'm not... It's it's because I have to include a load of links for any mods that I've um, included. Because otherwise it's just really difficult for you to get established on the map. Uh, you just lose everything. You know, I could, I could just sell it all. And then you've got basically some... You can, like, replace it with some mods that you want to use yourself. Something like that. Um, and that would make it a little bit easier. Or I can just hold on to the save game exactly as it is for a month or two until I've got a little bit of spare time. At the moment, time is not really something I've got very much of. I'm sure you'll be able to understand that considering my um, schedule is just... It completely exploded. Uh, I'll be not having any weekend off for the next few weekends. And, uh, or if I do, it's not going to be very much time off. But uh, I, I will. Once things die down a little bit, and I'm not doing, you know, insane amounts of um, episodes every day and things like that, then I could upload this save game file if you want. But I, honestly, I don't think that we've done enough to warrant me uploading the save game file. I haven't like gone looking into any of the other fields have I? I haven't, I haven't sort of gone into any of the rest of it we've got like, I was talking about the next sort of stage was going to be like cutting out a big section over here maybe a section here there's sections here that we could cut out or a piece over here there's a big area there that we could go for um more pieces up here and and basically we would start sort of carving out large areas of the mountain. We've got these big areas of the mountains up here that we wouldn't be able to touch. Um, something that I wouldn't mind in the future is if we do go back to doing something like this, is one with not quite so many mountains in it, I think. If we had slightly fewer mountains in it, it would lend itself well to a much longer series. Um, although, you know, saying that, it's going to take us an awful long time to remove that big chunk of trees right there. As well as the big chunks of trees all the way down the side here. You know, that's that's an awful lot of work just for those bits. This field here is not a bad size, right? This, this field here is a very impressive size. I... Let's run that one along here a minute. I don't know how much land we've got. I think there is a way to find out. I think there is an actual way to find out exactly how much we've got here. 
I'll show you in a minute. Let's, uh, let's just stop you a second. We'll back you all the way down there like that. There we go. And then we go to there like that. We'll start you up. And then I'll run this one up here. All the way around the rest of the field is now done. I've just got that to do. And then run up here. So I'm going to start fast forwarding time already. We should... We switched over to simple, um, what do you call, simple um, fertilizing. So we've only got one stage of fertilizer to deal with. We don't have any more than that. So we can bring this one back over here and we can return it. Jump off of you a minute. And we go back to there and return. Right, that one's done. So what we can do in order to switch you off a minute because you're getting very noisy. Uh, great demand at for straw pellets. Well, that's just disappointing. We've got $3,000. We need to get a trailer. Wow. $9,000. Uh, 4500 for one of those little ones there. Okay, let me stop fast-forwarding time a minute so that we can get a machine. We've got the baler over there, except I'm thinking, you know, the baler with the straw, you'd probably want that, so we'll keep that. The... the trailer as well. I'm going to keep that. That one over there. The logging trailer. We'll sell that one back so that we've got enough money to buy uh, another trailer. And then... I know we could sell some wood chips, but that takes too long, and uh, we don't get very much money for those that we've got at the moment. That would be something that we will do in our Let's Play that we do of Super Super Hard Mode at some point in the future. At some point. I don't know when it would be, but at some point. So let's just bring this one back over here. I'm, I'm stopping the fast forward of time so that we don't have a drain of money while we just get rid of these. So let's move you off there. Switch you off like that and jump out while the tractor's still moving because that would be the safest way to do it. $10,000 right there for that one and 16000 17000 almost for that one right there. So now we've got 30 grand. We can get another trailer. And I like these types of trailers as opposed to these types. These types are quite good, but it's reversing them. Although I don't think we need to do any reversing. So we're going to go with that one right there. 21,000 litres, $25,000. Why not? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. We've got dark green, white or brown. It's a shame we don't have more colours available. I've never actually coloured one of these at all. So let's just... Let's go with white. Let's go, let's go with white. Design, colour, design white. I have no idea what that is. Doesn't cost any extra, so let's buy it. There we go. We did colour the other bit. Uh, so what's the design? Is that like the, the green around the edge? It, I think it might be. Looks quite good though. It's got to be. It's got to be said that trailer does actually look quite good with the white, the colours that we got on it. I don't think are mismatched at all. I think I think that does fit quite nicely. Yes, it is a bit unfortunate that trailer is going to be the dirtiest trailer in the kingdom for you know it, it, within like the first fifteen seconds of using it ever. But that little tiny minor detail aside, I still think it's pretty good. Now, if we run up through here, you can see we would be able to make a really nice field up through here. We could make a nice big field. But then, it's the bit up over here that I was looking at um, on the map just now. We wouldn't be able to turn, if we were to have this map as like a longer Let's Play, or, you know, a, a map that was immediately converted over to FS19 for a longer Let's Play, there's not... You know, there's a lot less land that we could actually physically use. We would struggle to use some of this land. And actually most... Well, I suppose most of this would be alright. You know, we would, we'd struggle maybe to put a combine on some of this land. But I think a lot of it might be alright. Um, yeah. Some strange shaped fields, but then that would be quite realistic then. That, you know, it's, it's, it is extremely unrealistic to have square fields everywhere. And, well, I say that. It's extremely unrealistic where I live to have square fields everywhere. You, you, you do have quite a lot of square-ish fields. 
Um, but most fields have got weird shapes because there's weird things around the fields and in the fields and you've got roads going everywhere and stuff like that. I know some parts of the world, you know, your fields have just kind of been put out in a grid and they have it. And you've got lots of square fields everywhere. And to me, that's like, it, it does look strange. It really does. But I've seen the maps and I've looked at, um, let's, you know, not just Let's Plays. I've looked at the real life maps that these things are based on. And yeah, it, 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 it's a real thing. So that to me is, it, it, does, it does look very strange. It's got to be said. But then, that's what I love about this game. It has opened my eyes to so many different methods of farming all around the world that I didn't even know existed before I started playing this game. Um, and I, I'm a, I grew up on a farm, right? I'm a farmer. I've got generations of farming on both sides of my family. It's in my blood. I know farming. I know farming practices. I may get farming practices completely and totally wrong on a very regular basis when I'm looking at different things, but I understand them, and I very, very quickly, I like to think, uh, can grasp the concepts of different types of farming and how it works, and how it works for different people. And um, that's one thing I love about this game, is it's introduced me to so many new methods of farming and different techniques of doing the same job that I have done over and over and over myself and then I'm seeing all these new ways of doing that same job and some of them are absolutely fantastic some of them I look at them and I scratch my head and I think how on earth did you come to that solution to that problem and then you look at the bigger picture you look at where it is located in the world and you look at the different um, techniques that have been employed in order to get to that like particular result and you start to understand it more. You start to sort of think, ah, oh, right. So that, that sort of, it went from there to then to there and then on to there. And that's how it's so much different to us, even though we could both be doing it exactly the same right now without any detrimental effect to either performance, consider, you know, even though we're in different parts of the world. And it's, it's, very, it's, it's very cool the way that you get this kind of development of farming practices in different parts of the world and the way that they interact and one sort of leads on to the other and when you look at it at first it makes no sense at all but when you look into it further it makes perfect sense and you really start to understand it and it's like you know the light bulb switches on and you you get to see this and it's, it's very awesome it's it is very very awesome um am i going to change particular practices that I have based on things I've seen in other parts of the world. Maybe some of them. Most of them probably not because, you know, I go with what's familiar and if what's familiar works and other methods are not better, faster, more efficient or any of the above, why change it? You don't need to change just for the sake of, oh, well, those people, they're doing it like that, therefore that must be better. They're different, therefore... Um, you know, different is not necessarily better, but different is not necessarily worse either. It can just be different. And this is another thing that Farming Simulator brings to us, which I think is absolutely wonderful. All of the Farming Simulator games have brought this to us, as showing us that different is neither better nor worse in so many situations. Different is just different. And that is it. It's, it, it's literally the only thing is that it's not what you're used to. Uh, different is different. There is no good or bad about it. It's just an alternative way of doing something. And yes, you can easily tell by comments on forums and Facebook pages and Twitter and Reddit and anywhere else that, you know, trolls like to go and hang out, that there are a great deal of people who struggle with the concept that different is not evil. Um... And it really, it does sadden me that there are so many of those people in the world. I really, it, I, I don't like that at all. Different is not wrong. Different is not bad. And it's, it's just, it's, well, I, 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 I did say it, but I'll say it again. It, it does, it, I find it deeply upsetting. Deep, it just saddens me to, to see it. You know, you, you've got these people talking about something that's different and the only reason that they have this kind of almost rabid hatred of something 
is because it's not what they're used to. It's different. There is no other reason. There's no logic behind it. There's no actual valid point made anywhere. It's just, that's different. Therefore, we must hate it and do what we can to tear it down. I don't like that. I, I really don't. That is, it's, but it's not, I, I'm not sort of saying this is the farming simulator community. Generally, the farming simulator community tells those trolls where to go. Um, I've seen this an awful lot. You, you get these comments coming up and most of the responses are, okay, troll, please just go away now. Um, take, take your nonsense and be gone. We're, we're not interested. And the majority of the farming simulator community seems to be along the lines of, that's just really cool. This works. We'll try it. That's different to what I'm used to, but it still works. This is different. What if you do it like this? Oh, yeah, that's actually, you know, a, a, maybe a more efficient way of doing it or um, a way that would fit that particular area better than this way. And it's, it does seem to be quite open. Although, but, you know... I'm, I'm sort of venturing into talking about the entire internet, and we all know that the internet is a wonderful, amazing, incredible thing, but at the same time, it's also got... Um, we've, we've all seen the posts on Reddit. We've all seen the Twitter feeds. We've all seen the comment section on some things on Facebook. And if you spend too long dwelling on those, you begin to lose all faith in humanity. Don't. Just don't. Don't spend lots of time dwelling on those things. It's not good for your mental health. It's not good for your faith in humanity. And it's just not good for you in general. Right? It's, it's, not, a, it's not a thing that you want to do. And so I would strongly recommend that you don't. Just avoid the comments section. Unless it, you know that it's going to be fairly positive. Like, for example, the very... I was deeply saddened by the passing of Stan Lee. The man is an absolute legend. And he touched the lives of millions of people. He had a positive impact on millions of lives. There's not many people that have had the kind of impact on the number of people that he did in his lifetime. And you, I, I looked at loads and loads of different tributes to him. And you read down through the comments on them and... That was the sort of thing that made me feel good about the human race, right? It was just so much positivity flowing from it. It was absolutely amazing. If you were fe if I, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling down right now, if you if you if you got a, a having a bit of a low point in life, go and have a look at some of the tributes to Stan Lee, and it will help to restore some of your faith in humanity. Yes, there's going to be the inevitable troll, but those trolls are getting shot down left, right, and center. It's absolutely wonderful to see that most of the posts, there won't be any trolling. There's none at all. It's just heartfelt tributes pouring forth a collective remembering of joy that this man has created and caused in so many people's lives. And it's just absolutely wonderful. It really is. If you want to feel good about humanity, go and read some of the tributes for Stan Lee. It is it's genuinely amazing. It really is. It will you will you will come away from that with a big smile on your face and you will feel much better about the just the world in general and think that, well, actually. Maybe there is hope for humanity after all. Maybe we're not all doomed to, like, end up killing ourselves one way or another. It's, it, it was, it's, it's good. There's lots of good stuff. Right. We're going to be running out of time fairly soon. So, um, as you can appreciate, my schedule at the moment is a little tight. So we're just going to wait for this to hurry up and uh, ripen. And then we can jump into this one and we can start doing a bit of combining. We're not going to do very much combining, but we're going to do some. There we go. The corn is ripe. We have a tractor and trailer ready to roll. I'm going to switch you off a minute. We're not going to be doing very much with you, unfortunately, but we will do a bit. So I'll get you over here. I'm going to bring you over this way. Bring you into the field. Let me go control H like that. You're going to go around that way. We've got the AI on. And it should be lift header, hire worker... No, I want to switch over to that one there. Straw swath is enabled. 
We're ready to roll, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready to roll. So let's do this. Field detection. 1.5 hectares. That's what I was going to do. I was going to look in here to tell you how much we've done. That said 1.5 hectares. The other one that I was going to do was here. Worked hectares. 1.6. Cultivated. 2.9 total. Uh, I thought it would say ploughed, but it doesn't say ploughed hectareage. So we can't actually use that. Uh, if I go like this and I very quickly go to the options... Turn that up to 100. Okay. There. Now, don't drive into that lake. That is the only thing that I request is that you do not drive into the lake. I don't think it will. The AI vehicle extension is normally pretty good at not driving you into the lake. But you never can tell. Sometimes it likes to be a bit difficult, doesn't it? I think that if I do that, that is not going to be a bad final screenshot. I mean, I very often... Ooh, maybe we could do a screenshot like that. I'll, I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit. There we go. So that you can see we're going alongside the lake and you can see everything else in the background. So we haven't got like a close-up view of the machine because every screenshot ends up being a close-up view of the machine and then they all get a bit samey. So let's have a, let's have a scenery shot, shall we? There we go. Scenery shot like that. That's actually pretty good there, because you've got like, the, the lake coming in round behind it as well, which I, I feel is, is quite good. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't be silly. Don't be ridiculous. Just, just keep going like that. You could have gone round that corner without causing any problems. But no, you had to be difficult, didn't you? You had to try to drive in a dangerous way very close to the steep bank. But it's going all right now, so that's the main thing. We have already got half a tank, and we haven't been around this field once. That's not bad, actually, I think. I feel that's, that's actually a pretty good rate. We've gone round a little bit further. It should keep just going right round the field now. So we will go and grab our um, tractor over here. And we're going to run up alongside the combine, and we're going to unhitch a little bit. We can still see the grass in the background on there. I'm not quite sure why it's showing that in the background. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's something, un, you know, lying underneath it or something to do with, like, the, the, how the surface of the map works or something. I don't know. There's, there's various different reasons. Map making is something that is rather complex and a little bit beyond the simple minds that I've got. I'll just bring that one up there. So, oh, yeah, I forgot. I've got this on um, stop while unload. Probably best to ha keep it on stop while unload. So we'll bring that out of there. And why have you switched off? There is no valid reason for you to have... Ah, oh, you haven't. I see. You've just shut down the, um, the main engine. That's all you've done. You've shut down your main engine for a minute just while we unload. And then as soon as you finish... I remember now also this combine is rather slow with offloading. Um, the overload speed on this one is very slow considering the capacity of the tank. That might also be why this combine was so cheap. You know, it harvests pretty quickly, but my goodness me, doesn't it take a while to unload itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this trailer over here and we're going to unload it into our silo. Just so that we can see unloading into the silo. There we go. Look. Uh... Which, oh, it's that one. I was trying to remember what key was tip. I couldn't remember. It's been so long since I played just keyboard stuff. Um, well, just keyboard for actually doing any harvesting. So we've got a little bit on there. While that one carries on round, I'm going to go over to this side so that we can take some stuff out of our silo. Over here, there we go. We've got 6,000 litres a week. I'm going to unload that. Now, that's an overload speed that is a little bit more reasonable. I feel that we can use that. And then we're going to take this one over here and we're going to sell some wheat. Going to, yeah, really we've got the wrong tractor for this job. We should be using the fast track. Definitely one that we want for this. I didn't think this through, did I? Um, at least we don't have very far to go. If we, were, if we were having to drive from one end of the map to the other, we would definitely be wanting something like the fast track. So let's bring you up here. 
like that and then we can tip you out and we can sell our very first wheat there we go two thousand three hundred and fifty one dollars made from our harvest absolutely fantastic and there we have it the final little bit I'm not going to be finishing harvesting this but we've done it we've done two cuts of grass on here we did our bales we had our fantastic new wrapper. Thank you very much to Dave Davidson. Or was it David Davidson? I can't remember now. I'm very sorry. Um, for doing that a wonderful adjustment on the wrapper. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm absolutely tickled pink by it. I really am. Pun intended. <laughs> it was awesome seeing that on those bales. It was genuinely amazing. And thank you very much to everybody else that immediately, when I said about it last week, I was genuinely like overwhelmed by the number of people that said, oh, I would love to do that for you. That would be brilliant. I will do that. I will give up my time and let you uh, I'll do that for you. It was just absolutely wonderful. And it really, it, 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 it was just, I was, seriously, I was amazed. I absolutely amazed, really impressed. It was awesome. So thank you very, very much to everybody that offered to do that. That was fantastic. Um, so we did all of that, and we've managed to get some harvesting done on here as well with a combine, even though this combine ended up being stupidly expensive because of the header, but still. I feel that we've done well on this series. We actually got a bit further in this than I was originally expecting, and there will be a super hard mode series coming back to FS19 at some point. I don't know when, but I will try to put one in there somewhere. Um... But anyway, that is all we've got time for. So I was going to say until next time, but until the next game, until FS19 is it for this series. So until FS19, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. It was absolutely awesome having you here. Um, if you've enjoyed the episode, obviously, then please head down below and give us a like. Those likes do genuinely make a difference. And continue to spread the word. Tell your friends about me. Get them coming and watching as well. Because that, again, really makes a difference. It really helps the whole channel. It helps me grow. And it helps get more videos out to you. And a lot of you have been doing that. It's just amazing. There's more people turning up every day watching the videos. And it is just awesome. But anyway, until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye. And see you later.